现在订阅《同盟会英语》，不论找工作、升学或英检，表现更棒，快上 studioclassroom.com。现在请收听教学节目。Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. Take it easy today on Advanced. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Advanced Radio. I am your host, David. Today is September thirtieth. 2021, right here at the end of the month, closing it out with day two of our health article, talking about seven ways to stay rested. I'm joined here in the studio once again by our very own Connie. Tell the people who you are. Hello, people. My name is Connie, and、um, I feel better rested today. I guess、oh, had a pretty good sleep last night,、yeah. and tried the note jotting thing. Not bad, not bad. All right, all right. That's, there you go. You jotted down some notes. Got some of that, some of the tornado, the thought tornadoes in、mm-hmm. your head. Were able to calm down a bit. Yeah, so I'm excited to learn about different kinds of rest that we can try out later this week. Excellent. Now I want to ask: Were there any points yesterday? Uh, that was really a surprising new thing, or something that you really were affected by. I thought were really interesting from yesterday's article.、Um, I think for I, I was thinking about a generational thing. I think for you know the younger generation nowadays, sensory rest is so crucial.、Um, mm-hmm. It's really hard for us not to always be on call with our phones and all our messages and all our, all our social media. Like、mm-hmm. being able to not always be. On call, like a doctor, you know, someone needs your attention right away,、um, and not feeling that constant stimulation, I think, is really important to f- be a person and to, you know, calm down and rest.、Um, but、mm-hmm. what I noticed from the last generation, I feel like mental rest is harder for them. Correct、hmm. me if I'm wrong, but I just from my you know own family or just、uh, talking to older people who don't. Sleep as well. I feel like they're they're thinking. There's a lot of thoughts, responsibilities that they're、mm-hmm. kind of rehearsing in their mind or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I could be wrong. Maybe young people also feel this. I think they're all. They can all be a struggle for everybody. But I think you're right that for, for sure, sensory rest is a lot harder to come by now with cell phones, computers, smart watches, smart toasters. Yeah, it, it's a real thing. What、yeah. does your toaster do? I don't know. You just turn it on with your phone using Wi-Fi. Oh, and it says toast. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like, like man. I, yeah. I mean, when it comes to, and the thing is, the trend, the trend is to have more and more of these kinds of devices. Right. You know, the trend is to have literally everything in your house connected to Wi-Fi and constantly collecting information about you, so that it can make your life theoretically more convenient.、Um, This is a, a that's a subject for another advanced article, but something that kind of freaks me out, and it all contributes to their us getting you know having more kind of sensory uh, uh, stimulation, you know, more right? Lights, it's like more. having more people, like an imaginary person. Your phone is now a person that you know wants to talk to you all the time. Yeah, yeah, and and it can be very it, it can be really overwhelming, right? So taking sensory rest is very very important. I also was. I also felt, you know,、um, I also feel like mental rest is something that is、um, kind of difficult for a lot of people. For myself, I've got my own kind of. Like I talked yesterday about、uh, that kind of system I had of listening to sm-、uh, calming music, sort of、uh, jotting down things in my journal. It was all my way of helping my mind to understand when it's sleep time, right? And that helped me to that that eventually helped me to be able to fall asleep faster, even without those same routines. But you have to train your mind how to sleep. You know, it's a it, it's a complex thing. But even then, it's not just physical rest that we're talking about. It, it's all these other all these other things that we also need rest from. Some of this rest happens while we're awake. A lot of it does, right? So why don't we continue that conversation? 
Today we're going to talk about the last four points on these seven ways to stay rested, starting with uh, creative rest and emotional rest, which are very important and are, I hope can lead to some really interesting discussions as we dive into those. So why don't we hop into our first reading now. It's going to be point number four and point number five. Let's do it. Four, creative rest. Inc.com and other sites are full of tips on how to be more creative. But just as important as striving to put out new ideas is remembering to pause and take in the building blocks out of which they're constructed. Ah, art, inspiring people, and time to let it all marinate. Five, emotional rest. This means having the time and space to freely express your feelings and cut back on people pleasing. Dalton Smith explains, emotional rest also requires the courage to be authentic. An emotionally rested person can answer the question, "How are you today?" with a truthful, "I'm not okay." And then go on to share some hard things that otherwise go unsaid. In other words, we all need the space to stop pretending for ourselves and others and get real about our feelings. All right. So our first point is creative rest, Connie. What do they have to say about creative rest? So they're talking about kind of about art and inspiration、mm-hmm. and kind of tapping into your creative side. And you know, I I didn't really wasn't able to put this in words until I read this article. But、mm-hmm. I did notice that sometimes when I found, found something, I really just immersed myself in like a really good book or a really good story, or I saw an art piece that was just blew my mind, or. You know, I'm writing and I'm in that creative process. There is、mm-hmm. some sort of something that's not quite inspiration. It's not quite awe and creation. It's like it is rest. It feels、mm-hmm. rejuvenated. You feel、mm-hmm. like you've tapped into a, a higher purpose and you see something different outside of yourself. And it is like this article mentions. It's like you're marinating all these your experience as a human being. And there's something incredibly rejuvenating about that. Yes, yes. Now here and and here we're talking about you know、uh, not just not 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 just like art that maybe an artist does, but also something that you might be doing at your job if you have to think up new ideas, if you have to write、uh, write articles or or write documents or or any of these things where you're trying to help your company by using your creativity. There's a a pressure. It can constantly be there of like I have to come up with something new, I have to make something interesting, I have to go look for inspiration, you know, in order to use it to make something else. Here, I feel like what they're saying is, when you're looking for those inspirations and you're looking for those things that are going to trigger some good ideas and whatnot, don't just go out hunting for that stuff so that you can make something. You should also just enjoy it for your own sake, right? Like these are the building blocks out of which your good ideas will later be constructed, right? Art,、uh, uh, all art, inspiring people, and time to let all those things marinate or kind of mix together in order to eventually create something else. But the thing is, good art, good ideas, good creations have to come out of you, you know. And if your heart is healthy and if your heart is rested. Then it's more likely to produce some good stuff, you know, that will be not just useful for whatever you want it to be useful for, but also be fulfilling for you personally. Right. So maybe it's talking about how to feed yourself creatively. You know, you、mm-hmm. want to do things that make you feel curious, or you know, stoke your interest in things, and、mm-hmm. you know, allow give you those little crumbs that you need eventually to be creative. Right. Now,、uh, Connie, I want to ask you. What inspires you? What's something that inspires you? Oh, it's this is so hard to really describe. I think、sure. very some little things, you know, or、mm-hmm. you know, a turn of a phrase, or just an idea, or just you know, a lot of times, it it does come from 
just daily life, something that happens. But I, I find that if you're too tired to really feel inspired, that's, that's a big uh, problem as well. Like you really do need to feel rested and have some kind of mental space to process, oh, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I feel something about that. Like if you're too tired to feel about something about something you know yeah like yeah. you need that rest to even notice like oh that was kind of interesting and to have time to think about it and it turns into something that you feel inspired by yes absolutely i and i know that feeling where it's like being too tired to feel inspired i i've had moments where i just feel like i'm moving 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 and uh the, the tiredness that i i get from those moments of life I always compare it to feeling like an old mop, you know. If you ever see like a like an old like a mop, you know, that you used to mop the floor. Sure. You ever see like an old one that's been used a million times and it's all you know black and brown and kind of will never be clean again because it's mopped so many floors and it's just sitting there sadly in the corner, dry and dead, you know. And sometimes I, in my worst moments, I feel like a mop, like I'm treating myself like just a mop, you know, and it's really sad, depressing feeling, but it's also a Mm -hmm. good kind of trigger to make me slow down, to make me say, you know what, Uh, maybe I'm going to take a half day, I'm going to go home, I'm going to take a nap, then I'm going to read this poetry, you know, or I'm going to go for a walk, I'm going to look at some trees, I'm going to just calm down, you know, and slow down. I mean, we don't want to treat ourselves like some kind of product producer where we're just Mm -hmm. squeezing every, you know, amount of energy and time out of ourselves you know if you're you're in charge of your own life and your own boss you don't want to be that boss that just works you like a slave and and realize that there's you know i don't i mean i think people put a big emphasis on you know giving it your all like putting it all on the pulling on the leaving it on the floor i think that's the um saying it's just Mm. like you give off all your energy there's nothing left but in reality, like how many times in your life can you really do that? Mm. I mean, you you still want to save something for yourself, for your family, and or just yourself. Like honestly, just yourself. Like yeah. you are worth saving a little bit of something that no one else gets to have. Yeah. You know, and yeah. it, it it's just it. You're not trying to sell your life here. You know. Right. 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 And, and and being around inspiring people is also like your good friends, your people, people who love you, people who who are pouring into you as you are also pouring into them. Right. These people can inspire you, uh, you know, even reading books about famous people, about artists that you, that, that you admire. You know, these are all ways that you can get that kind of creative rest. But I feel like Connie was also really touching on something very important, this emotional rest as well. Right now. Uh, the the, the uh, researcher who gave us this article, who kind of gave us the research for this article, says that this means having time and space to freely express your feelings and cut back on people pleasing. There's a pull quote here on the right hand side that I really love. We all need the space to stop pretending for ourselves and others and get real about our feelings. What do you think about that, Connie? I think that's really true, like, especially when you're trying to make something happen in your career or you're trying to network and make new friends. You, you have that uh, pressure to kind of present an uh, image of yourself or mm. maybe on social media mm-hmm. or maybe you're just trying to, you know, advance your job and or you're just trying to, you know, meet new people and you want them to like you. You know, there's yeah, that yeah. pressure to please them and to say yes to things that maybe you don't have time for. Or just, or just have a you know more edited version of yourself, and that can be incredibly exhausting. Yes, and with that emotional rest, right? A, an emotionally rested person can answer the question, "How are you today?" with a truthful, "I'm not okay." Now, this is interesting because I think that uh, if you're trying to get that emotional rest and you're trying to stop pretending, then yes, you will give people more honest quest- answers to those kinds of questions. Granted. You should only do that with people that are actually going to care. I think, I think, right? Uh, not that you should only do it with people who are going to care, but sometimes it can be actually a lot of extra energy to, you know, if someone's like a stranger, you know, or you someone who's not, you're not very close to, you know, you don't necessarily want to 
make yourself that vulnerable to them maybe because that's, you know, you don't really know how they're going to take it. You don't know if you're going to be able to really uh, have a good interaction with them after that point. But I, I don't know. What do you think, Connie? I mean, I don't think it has to be those two extremes of com- completely putting a wall up and saying, fine, I'm great. Hmm. Or like on the other end, just completely emotionally vomiting on a stranger. Right. You know, it c- you can say something honest and if they ask further, but you don't want to elaborate, you can at any point you can still say no, you know, but it's yeah. okay to be honest and, and say, you know, I'm not doing okay, but, you know, I'm working through it. And, you know, thanks for asking, though. And right. But at yeah. the very least, it's important to be honest with yourself. Like, you don't mm. have to necessarily share that with someone if you don't feel comfortable or, you know, this is not, you know, someone you know that well. But, you know, at very least, you should know yourself how you're doing. That's very true. And, uh, you know, Connie, I, li- I like that distinction you made there. You can still be honest without totally putting yourself out there, right? And that's good for you, and that can be good for them, too, right? It can create kind of – it can, those kinds of things can, can, can actually encourage your work culture or your church culture or wherever kind of community you are where people might be asking those kinds of questions. It can encourage that culture to be more honest, to be a more honest culture. You know, you can be – playing your part and kind of improving that that culture, making it a place where people can be more open. Right. I think that's difficult to kind of maneuver those boundaries. I mean, mm-hmm. but there are, is a very large gray area where you can, you know, still be open, but still protect yourself and still, you know, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's not one or the other. Right. 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 But the important thing is, yes, to stop pretending for yourself and others and get real about your feelings. Having that space will give you emotional rest. Uh, Now, we're going to get into another, kind of another side of emotional rest, uh, social rest, and and then we'll go on to talk about spiritual rest. So I guess, uh, why don't we uh, just take a moment to hop into our next reading, and that'll just be the the rest of that page, and then that'll be all for our health article. So why don't we hop into that now? Six, social rest. Some people energize you, others drain you. If you spend too much time with the latter type, you're going to need some social rest. Seven, spiritual rest. All humans, no matter their religious affiliation or lack thereof, have a need to feel connected to something larger than themselves. That's sometimes not easy to maintain in the middle of the minutia of everyday life. The good news is science shows simple interventions can give you a quick dose of awe that should lead to measurable increases in well-being. Dig a little deeper. So next time you think to yourself, I'm tired, don't leave your complaint at that. Instead, dig a little deeper and try to identify just what sort of rest you're lacking exactly. Once you know what you're missing, you'll be in a much better place to figure out how to recharge effectively. Okay, Connie, number six, social rest. Are you energized or drained by most people? I would say I'm an introvert. So most introverts are drained with a lot of social activity. On the Mm. flip side, extroverts are recharged with social activity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For myself, I am also actually more introverted, just meaning that I I do recharge with some people, but, and, and, you know, there's a very select group of people that I can really feel like I'm recharging with. And I, you know, oftentimes my most recharging moments are, yeah, uh, like for with one or two other people or alone with God riding my bike by a river at night. That sounds to me like total battery recharge right there, you know. Because I'm also like an introvert. But in any, but for anybody, though, for anybody, there is a balance. Some people energize you, others drain you. And so if you're spending too much time with the latter or the second, the, the group that was mentioned second, right, the people who drain you, then you're going to need some social rest. And I think this is kind of like, I, I don't know, it, to me, it strikes me as spend time with people who... Uh, you're pouring into them and they're pouring into you, you know, like not all your time with strangers and, and bars or just places where people maybe don't know you 
as well. What do you think that means, Connie? Um, I think there's a lot of things playing into this. I think, mm-hmm. like as you said, like you know, a healthy relationship has a good give and take. It's not someone just taking everything mm-hmm. and leaving you dry. On the other hand, I don't think that you should expect other people to recharge you. Or, mm. um, for example, you were talking about you know going out with strangers or meeting new people. Like, um, I think that can be incredibly draining on you, but. In that situation, you can't really expect, you know, those strangers to be trying to fill you up. Right. Um, and even with your close friends, like, you know, sometimes they don't have a lot to give you. And it is going to be a one-way street for a little while because they really need support. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, um, yes, you want to be very aware, like, okay, this person is going to take more energy out of me. And so I need to find a different way to recharge that's right. not going to come from this person. Right. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that just knowing yourself and knowing how you uh, relate to big crowds or just one person or certain people is really important information if you want to know how to uh, you know, live in a healthy way. That is so true. That is so true. You got to know yourself and you can't expect other people to just be you can't rely on other people necessarily in that way you know what i mean in like a selfish way you know you want to know like get, get, know yourself know what you need you know what i mean find ways of being able to keep yourself healthy so that you can be there for other people you know uh, our next one here is spiritual rest now this one is really interesting uh author says that all humans no matter their religious affiliation or which of religion they're connected with or lack thereof, someone who doesn't believe in anything, we would call them an atheist, have a need to feel connected to something larger than themselves. Uh, what do you think about this statement, Connie? I think that's so incredibly true. I think that mm-hmm. with all this talk about rest and just realizing that what kind of creature we are and different kinds of needs, you know, mm-hmm. spiritual needs, emotional needs, um, you know, as, as Christians, we talked uh, yesterday about, you know, God resting on the seventh day. Mm-hmm. And so for us, we're, we're very clear on who we need to connect to and someone we can always talk to and say anything about to. But I know that some people, you know, maybe don't really uh, believe in the spiritual side or they're, they maybe, you know, worship a lot of gods or they don't mm-hmm. really know what's going on in that spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. But I think that just... Um, being able to see outside of yourself and kind of realize that you are just a very, very small mm. thing in a very, very big world. Or, you know, we only live maybe a hundred years and the world has been here for thousands and thousands. So yeah, yeah. just kind of getting in touch with that perspective can really just put, get the pressure off. Absolutely. And yeah. allow you to rest in a different way. Yeah. Um, now for myself, something that really relaxes me is looking at pictures of the universe, actually. It kind of helps me get that context. Now, granted, one of the reasons that's comforting for me is because as I'm looking at pictures of how small the Earth is compared to all these other things, I'm also remembering in my own heart as a Christian that, you know, there's this, there is a God who made all this, and that God calls himself my father, right? Like, I'm, I'm his child. He cares for me. He loves me. And this one who loved me enough to, you know, show me so much love is the one who created this world, created the universe, created the sun, you know. So as I'm looking at those things, I'm also thinking, wow, the same one who made all that is the same one who says to me, I will protect you. I will be the place where you can rest, you know, all this kind of comfort and love that I'm reading about in the Bible that that God is speaking to my heart, you know, is also the same God who did all this amazing stuff. So that's something that really helps me find rest. So it's, it's interesting. It's like, yeah, it's, it's hard to maintain that perspective in the middle of the minutia or the, all the small mundane details of life. But You know, science, in in this, at the end of this paragraph here, we see that science shows that simple interventions or simple moments that we spend to kind of reflect on those things can really help. But, and that's just one of the ways that I do it, right? Just looking at pictures of the universe. Right. I think giving up control and kind of knowing your place in the scheme of things and knowing God has a plan um, can all allow you to rest. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in the end, uh, Connie, the author gives us the advice to dig a little deeper 
if we just feel tired, right? Right. You know what I notice is mm. that, uh, speaking for myself and I'm sure a lot of listeners, is that it's hard to really understand what you're feeling and have a broad range of dis- adjectives to say, okay, you know, how I feel. Like sometimes you just say, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. I think tired is like a go-to, just being I'm not feeling great and I don't yeah. really know what's up. Yeah. Um, but I think um, it's definitely worth digging deeper. It's like, okay, you're, it's, tired is such a broad, unspecific emotion and mm-hmm. there's so much into that. So try to get more specific to know what you're feeling so then you can deal with it. That's right. Thank you so much, Connie. We're going to leave it at that, give you the last word, because that, that is a home run point right there. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this month of Advanced Articles. We love doing it. We look forward to uh, having you guys check out our shows again. Write into us to advance at studioclassroom.com. Let us know what you think. Until next time, I'm David. And I'm Connie. We're saying see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>